welcome my friends to this most important topic. It is my pleasure and my honor to be here for this. So let me just jump right in to the main topic. Now is absolutely the time that the world's core religions get serious about updating their fundamental dogmas and dharmas and gospels. That it has been over a thousand years at least since virtually all of them added significant ideas and practices to their main teachings. Teachings that themselves, virtually without exception, were originally created when men and women literally believed that the earth was flat that slavery was considered the normal state of nature, that women and other minorities were considered second-class citizens, if citizens at all, that evolution had not yet been discovered, nor most of the modern sciences, and thus the principal source of serious knowledge was considered to be mythic revelation, not scientific experiment and that the multicultural nature of so much knowledge was completely unheard of. My thesis is that the core ideas of the great traditions can literally and seriously be retained, but reinterpreted and included in a much more inclusive framework, often called an integral framework, that adds to those core doctrines the many new discoveries about spiritual experience, spiritual intelligence, and spiritual development that have been discovered during those thousand years. The result is a spiritual framework that, quote, transcends and includes the central teachings of the traditions, including the old but also adding a significant amount of new material that is fully compatible with the old, but that in essence brings it up to date in the modern and postmodern world. Such updating integral approaches to the great traditions have already begun in many of them, including Christianity, See, for example, Paul Smith's Integral Christianity, Tom Thresher, Reverent Irreverence, Bruce Sangwin, The Emerging Church, Gary Simmons' work at Unity Church, the work of Chris Durkis, Roly Stanich, Father Thomas Keating, among numerous others, Hinduism, Dustin DiPerna, who has also done significant integral work on many other great traditions, Islam, Amir Ahmed Nasser, my Islam, Judaism, see, for example, Mark Gaffney's Radical Kabbalah, as well as Buddhism, Junpo Roshi, Dharma heir to Edo Roshi, and his main student, Doshin, Diane Musho Hamilton, Patrick Sweeney, direct lineage hair to Chogim Trungpa, and Trollic Rinpoche, among others. Work such as The Coming Interspiritual Age by Kurt Johnson and David Ord, to name a few. The excitement created by such updating has been considerable, particularly considering that it can be done indeed while maintaining the core teachings of the original tradition, including ways to rather seamlessly integrate the religious tradition with modern science. This overall approach is achieved by noticing several fundamental items about how spiritual experience and spiritual intelligence is created in the first place, items that were already demonstrably present in the original teachings, and thus items that can be expanded and updated while not violating the essentials of the original teachings themselves in the least. As noted, several teachers have been doing the same thing with Buddhism for several years now, and so it seemed appropriate 
to summarize the essentials of that new integral approach to Buddhism as an example of how any great tradition in general can be integrally updated and informed. As I pointed out in the beginning sessions of this presentation, Buddhism itself, unlike virtually every other great tradition, has always been open to the continuing unfolding and expansion of its own teachings, as evidenced in its own notion of the three turnings of the wheel of Dharma, or truth, which is a major teaching in Buddhism itself. The idea is that Buddha Dharma, Buddha truth, has itself already undergone three major evolutionary turnings in its own teachings according to Buddhism itself. Thus, the first began with the original historical Gautama Buddha himself and is preserved to this day in teachings such as the Theravada. The second turning was introduced by the genius Nagarjuna around 200 CE with his revolutionary notion of shunyata, of the radical emptiness or unqualifiability of ultimate reality, which could not be said neither to be, nor not to be, nor both, nor neither. The idea being to clear the mind of any and all concepts about reality so that reality itself could be directly experienced, a notion that became the foundation of virtually every Mahayana, greater vehicle, and Vajrayana, diamond vehicle, teaching henceforth. The third turning occurred with the half-brothers, Asanga and Vasubandhu, and it's generally called the Yogacara school, sometimes referred to as the mind-only school, which agreed with Nagarjuna that ultimate reality was emptiness, but so was ultimate mind. Each of those turnings tended to transcend and include the previous ones, all of them agreeing with many of the Buddha's original points and then adding new teachings of their own. Buddhism is thus used to updating its own major teachings with new and profound additions. But it has been some 1,500 years since the third turning and even the great tantric schools, which flourished from the 8th to the 11th centuries CE at places such as the extraordinary Nalanda University, are now close to a 1,000 years old. The time, again, is more than ripe for a new fundamental addition, a new turning of the wheel of Dharma. Many teachers have been saying the same thing, for a number of years now. This is one version, a version, that is a version that has already demonstrated its usefulness and versatility. This presentation is in, divided into three major sections. Section one deals with the history of Buddhism and its previous three turnings. Section two briefly describes the new proposed integral framework and demonstrates its fundamental elements and operations. And section three concludes with several musings on the possible future of Buddhism itself, comparing the future of Buddhism if it does become integral with its future if it doesn't. This future is not dissimilar to that of the other major traditions themselves. These spiritual systems need to be brought into the modern and postmodern world in significant ways or face extinction or alternatively increasingly confined to the childishly minded. The suggestions for how to do so with Buddhism are, in essence, suggestions that can be applied to virtually every other religion. And thus, no matter what your faith, 
including atheistic or agnostic and theistic or non-theistic, I hope this presentation has a good deal to offer you. With humility and gratitude, I therefore offer the following suggestions for ways to return spirituality to the central and fundamental place it has had in human life for most of our existence on earth, but has for the last few hundred years increasingly been losing respect. May this help you locate your own faith, again, atheistic or agnostic, theistic or non-theistic, in this wondrous, amazing, mysterious, miraculous place we call the cosmos.